This video provides a short overview of LeapfrogWorks and the integrated demonstration project to help new users get up and running quickly. When you open LeapfrogWorks, even for the first time, you will notice there is an existing demo project available to open. If your IT administrator did not install a copy of the demonstration project, it can be found here. Be sure to check out the project's notes and comments to help you discover not only what is possible in LeapfrogWorks, but also link out to a world of help and training resources. Access the notes by double-clicking here and the comments by simply right-clicking any object with a speech bubble. In this video, I will use the existing demo project to explain the user interface, the internal project organization, visualizing the data, and interacting with the scene using the mouse and keyboard. When you open an existing project or create a new one, LeapfrogWorks will open to the Scene View tab. There are four main parts of the screen. To the left is the project tree, in the center, the scene window, below the scene window is the shape list, and in the lower right hand corner is the properties panel. Other parts of the scene include a small main toolbar, the processing tasks list, and the Leapfrog Works drop down menu. The project tree is where you import your data, build your models, and create your outputs. The layout of the tree is designed to follow the workflow. Import all of your available data to the respective folders at the top of the tree, build your models in the appropriate folders in the middle of the tree, and then create your required outputs in the folders at the bottom of the tree. The majority of LeapfrogWorks functionality resides in the project tree and can be discovered through a right click of the different folders. This demo project contains several types of imported data, including boreholes, a topography surface, a map, GIS lines representing mapped unit contacts, and a tunnel design file. You will know there are items within a specific folder if there is a little black triangle beside that folder. By clicking that triangle, you can open up the folder to see the objects inside. Folders without a little black triangle are currently empty. Data in the project tree is consistently organized so that the object of interest is at the top and all the components that go into making up that object are listed below, like we can see here in the Geological Models folder. Residing below the complete model object in the project tree are all the components that comprise the model, such as the boundary, the lithologies, and the individual surfaces and volumes. Any object in the project tree can be viewed in the scene window. To view an object in the scene, simply click and drag it in or right-click it and select View Object. Once you have objects displayed in the scene window, you can use both the mouse and the keyboard to interact with the scene. I strongly recommend having a mouse while working with LeapFrog. While it is possible to exclusively use the keyboard or trackpad, a mouse makes the interaction with the scene much easier. First, to rotate the scene, simply click and hold the left mouse button. Zoom in and out by using the scroll wheel of the mouse. You can also pan around by either clicking and holding the center scroll wheel, or if you don't have one, you can simultaneously click and hold the right and left mouse buttons down together. To rotate around a specific point, hover the mouse over that point and click and release the scroll wheel, or if you don't have one, click and release the two mouse buttons together. To help you take maximum advantage of LeapFrog's 3D visual environment and stay oriented in 3D space, LeapFrog has a split view option that allows you to view up to two secondary viewpoints of the objects displayed in the scene. This can be very useful. If you're reviewing a model in 2D with the slicer on in the main scene view, but wanted to keep track of where you are, you can choose to turn off the slicer in the plan view window. Then, as you move through the sliced model in the scene view, you will be able to track the slicer location in the overall model. When an object is loaded in the scene, it appears down here in the shapes list. And when you select an object in the shapes list, the respective properties panel also appears for it. The options in the shape list allow you to control the object's visibility, color, transparency, and more. This can be very useful for interpreting data and making modeling decisions. The shape properties panel adjacent to the shapes list provides more detailed control on the appearance of the selected object. For more information about the user interface, project tree organization, 
or interacting with the scene, please check out these links found in the notes section of the demo project or work through the training courses available in MyLeapFrog.